Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So I had showed you guys before uh, we had entered our first video in, into this uh, this website that we have, the Shango website. And this data is now being persisted, meaning that it's stored in a database. It's a Postgres database. And if we went over to our PG3 admin, which is the uh, you know GUI interface that you have for Postgres, you can um, see that if I went ahead and I said like view top 100 rows, uh, or, uh, rows I'm sorry, It'll pull back this data so you can see it's actually being persisted and that's what's showing up here inside the Django admin. And what we're going to touch on in this video is actually how we query our database. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Databases are difficult to query. Um, there's a lot of people that are dedicated in DBAs, meaning uh, database administrators that are very good at writing SQL quote code, like raw SQL select all from blah 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 where like all this stuff and it's it's a very cryptic language dating back to like the 19 probably 70s i don't know i'm guessing off the top of my head and it'll be around probably for another 20 years it's a pretty ugly bastard to deal with a lot of people don't like writing raw sql even though it can be fast um so what we've done in the modern day in the last um you know at least 10 or 15 years that i know of um, we've created wrappers around those uh those queries that we call uh, object relational mappers or ORMs for short, so ORM. Now Django has a built-in ORM that you're going to use and it allows you to write Python code to query your database and it does it so that it's efficient. So you're going to write it out in a Django specific way, you know, Python Django specific way, and then on the back end it all gets transferred into a raw SQL and it does it, um, you know, based on you know, the most um, you know, opportunistic way, so that way you're not uh, executing like terrible SQL that's going to end up causing performance issues with your database. So, the Django ORM is uh, is very is very good. Um, there's other ORMs out there that you can use, like uh, SQL Alchemy is a popular one with Python. If you've ever done C Sharp, Entity Framework is nothing but a an ORM. Um, so, you know, ORMs are in all kinds of different programming languages, but the Django one is it works pretty well. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. So if we go over to our views, in the last video, we actually looked at how to return raw data from the server. And the, the server can get data from an API, from a database, from a raw text file. It doesn't matter uh, where it is, but typically you're going to be retrieving data from a database. Uh, that's what most people do anyway. And then they send it down. So we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, query our database. So we need to import the actual model object from the app that we want to query. So we only have one app and that's a video. And if we go down to the models, you can see that the class is video. So what we need to do is we need to actually import from video.models, which is this models py file, and we want to import video. So let's go back to our view where we're going to be doing the querying. So up at the top, we're going to say from video.models import video. And now that we've actually imported it, we can query using Django's ORM ORM, the data from our database by saying data equals video.objects.all and make sure you have the open and close parenthesis. We're going to get rid of my string here and we'll replace uh, data, we'll call it data. And that means we also need to update our template because it was referencing my string. And I'm going to show you something here in a second, um, but let's just go ahead and reference data as a variable. It's actually not going to be a variable. It's going to be an object, but let's go ahead and take a look at what happens here. So if we went ahead and restarted the server and we went over to the video page, you're going to see that since we're referencing it as a variable, it's telling you what type of object it is. So it's a video object. And what that actually means, it's a query set object. So it actually consists of all video objects that we have in our database. In our case, we only have one, which is that census fail video that we added. 
but we could have a million or we could have 500 or however many you have in the database because we said when we queried the database using Django's query language, we said all. So grab all video objects. Now, in order to be able to reference them in our template, let's go ahead and instead of just saying, hey, show this as a variable, which you would never want to do, not with a Django ORM object that has a query set in it, and that's actually referred to as a query set, meaning that it has a lot of um, different individual query objects in there. So in order to do a for loop in the Django template, you're going to use the curly brace and a percent sign, and you're going to say for... And then you can just simply say like X or whatever you want, or we'll just say video in uh, data. Then we need to reference this and say video dot um, title. I think that's what we called it, right? Title. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we just called it title, right? So we're just going to print the title. And any time you have any sort of for statement or any sort of logic in your template, you have to actually end it explicitly. So in the same type of curly braces, we're saying end for. And you might want to do some indentation there, too, if it makes it easier for you to read. Now, if we went ahead and refreshed our page, you're going to see that instead of printing out the database object, it actually said, OK, let me print out the name of the title because that's what we told it to print out. And I could have said video.description or video.date or whatever to print it all out in any sort of way that I want. But that's actually how you um, display uh, HTML surrounding your data. So like, you could actually create a structure and repeat it a million times over. And it would just be one little block of code repeated a million times. And it just saves you a, a lot of hassle. That's what templating languages do. And that's what you know, Django's template language obviously does as well. So in this case, we only had one video. Let's, you know, for craps and gigs, let's go ahead and add another video just so you guys can see that it does work uh, with endless amounts of videos. In fact, I'll even reference a video from a Django tutorial that is part of this series. So if I went and said add video, uh, we'll give it a title of creating our first app in Django 1.9. Blah, blah, blah. Tags, we'll say Django, blah. Anyway, let's go ahead and save that. If we went back over to our video page, you can see that it's now, it went through each one and now it's printing them off in order because of that for loop that we did inside of our Django template. Now there's all kinds of ways of querying the data. Most of the time you're not going to want to grab every object in your database and list it like I just showed you, especially if you start having hundreds or millions of records and stuff like that. It's just not feasible. So in the following videos we are going to get more into the data, the database language that is the Django ORM so you can understand a little bit uh, better of how you're going to get individual data out of your database and not just everything. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye.